welcome to the next lecture of da design and analysis of algorithm in today's lecture we will talk about asymptotic notations and asymptotic analysis as in the previous lecture we had seen that growth of function how is related with the asymptotic analysis and time complexity how all these things are related to each other in today's lecture we will talk about asymptotic analysis as we had seen in the previous lecture that what is the importance of the asymptotic analysis the importance of the asymptotic analysis is that it gives the characteristics of performance of algorithms so it will help us in analyzing the algorithms performance how it is performance how it is performing with the different types of inputs and with the growth of the input size it will also help us in comparing the performances of the algorithm let's say for a problem of sorting we have lots of algorithms so how we can analyze that which algorithm is performing best in which input size or in which input type so these asymptotic notations will help us and this asymptotic analysis will help us in comparing the performances of those algorithms and identifying which algorithm is performing better than the others so these are the two major reasons why we perform asymptotic analysis and as we know the asymptotic analysis is done with the help of the asymptotic notations before we jump into the asymptotic notations let's understand what we mean by asymptotic analysis as we know asymptotic is basically a line that tends to try to be a curve it's not actually but it tends or it tries to be as similar as it can be of a curve so it is basically an assumption of a curve so it gives the idea how the situations are so that is how the asymptotic analysis evolved that we need to assume how the exact performance of the algorithm will be obviously we cannot analyze the perfect performance or the exact performance of the algorithm but we want to have some idea we want to have some assumptions that how algorithm will perform so that is why we need the asymptotic analysis and here we have given two reasons why asymptotic analysis is important now asymptotic analysis is done with the help of these asymptotic notations obviously the assumptions we need some mathematical expressions even to assess the assumption even to assess the performance the approximate performance of the algorithm we need some mathematical notations so these are asymptotic notations these are five in numbers big o big omega theta little o and little omega as we have talked about complexity of the algorithm in the previous lecture we had seen that how important space and time complexities are and how we measure these time complexities in three cases worst case average case and best case so these asymptotic notations are also related to those best worst and average cases so these will give the idea what is the best case of the algorithm what is the worst case of the algorithm and what is the average case of the algorithm let me tell you that analyzing the performance of the algorithm is all about analyzing how worst it will perform and analyzing how best it will perform that means we need to analyze that what is the maximum time the algorithm will take in any computation and what is the minimum time the algorithm will take in any competition that means we want to have the idea of upper and lower bounds yes what is upper bound the maximum time the algorithm will take in execution and what is lower bound the minimum time the algorithm will take in the execution so just by having these upper bound and lower bound we can assess the performance of the algorithm and even we can compare different algorithms together so let's jump into these uh, asymptotic notations let's talk about this big o first so we can see that this is the graph of big o let's say we have a function fn 
obviously these analysis will uh, will give us a better idea for a larger input size may all these uh, asymptotic notations give us the same idea because the algorithms may perform equally good with smaller input but whenever the input size increases obviously they behave differently so we actually need to analyze with larger inputs onto the algorithms so we can see that this is a function fn and the big o gives the upper bound that this fn will always be lower you can see that this is our function fn how the algorithm is performing will always be lower to its upper bound so this c gn gives us the upper bound of the algorithm that means the algorithm cannot take more time than this gn you can see this must be having some initial input let's say that this is n0 that i have already told you that for smaller inputs maybe this is not the actual case but we analyze for larger input so this is the uh, n0 that before this the input is a small and uh, all the algorithms are performing similar so we need to analyze above this n0 so above this n0 we can see that the function is always lesser than or equal to this cgn this is called big o so big o gives us the idea of basically upper bound upper bound so this is big o gives us the idea of upper bound that the algorithm the maximum time taken by the algorithm so this is big o fn is always less than equal to cgn that means algorithm will always take time lesser than or equal to this upper bound in the notation formula it is written as fn is equal to big o of gn so this is big o now let's talk about big omega it is just reverse of the big o as big o tells us the upper bound the big omega tells us the lower bound so lower bound means the minimum time that is taken by the algorithm so it will give us the idea again in this we also have this initial input size n0 after this initial input size n0 the function will always take a larger amount of time than its lower bound so this cgn will indicate the minimum time that will take taken by the algorithm <coughs> this is just the opposite of the uh, big o so it will give us the best case result so it is related it can be related with the best case analysis best case complexity analysis and big o can be related with the worst case complexity analysis so as we can see this fn is always uh, above then this cgn which means fn will always be greater than equal to cgn that means the algorithm will always take more time or equal to the minimum amount of time and in the notation it is written as fn is equal to this is the notation of the big omega g of n as we have this uh, big o let me write this as big omega as we can see that we have big o and big omega we have a little o and little omega with only one difference that in this little o this is represented by little o with obviously the initial value n0 you can see the graph are pretty much similar because there is only one smaller difference that here in big o the condition is fn is less than equal to cgn but in little o this equality is eliminated so in little o we have fn is always less than cgn it always it also talks about the upper bound of the function upper bound of the algorithm similarly uh, the little omega is similar can be compared or it is similar with this particular big omega again with the same difference that here the condition that fn is greater than equal to cgn but in little omega the equality is eliminated this always uh, this will also give you the uh, lower bound concept so it will also give us the idea of the lower bound but with one difference from the big omega that it is also eliminated the equality 
and the fifth one is uh, that is your theta theta will always give us the average case complexity analysis so we can see that this is the combination of this big o and this big omega because the function will always give us the idea that there are two uh, bounds we can one have we have the upper bound and we also have the lower bound so mathematically the fn will always be greater than equal to to its lower bound that is c to g n and will always be lesser than equal to to its upper bound that is c1 of g n so theta gives us the idea of the average case complexity so these are all uh, five uh, asymptotic notations are very important in terms of your examinations i hope you have understood these uh, five asymptotic notations in the next coming lectures we will understand actually how we can analyze the algorithms performance with the help of these uh, asymptotic notations that's it for the today's lecture thank you so much